Hi everybody, it is August 25, 2019. I have a lot of information that I want to share with you regarding uh, radar extremely low frequencies based on the comments that I have read, that I've read throughout the years. More and more are suffering the consequences of these frequencies, experiencing a whole range of symptoms. And as you listen, you will hear your symptoms documented in studies. But I, I want to start this video just playing a few seconds of my video that I posted last night, starting with this radar site. It is August 24th. Oh, man. Okay. Sorry. Volume. What happened to the volume? But this only happened when my computer died. And now I'm using this computer. It's, I don't understand why I can't con get consistent volume. Please leave me a comment if you're experiencing that. It's a whole new uh, experience uh, since I've been on the internet. 2019, this is current radar. As you can see along the East Coast, Doppler radar is beginning to pulse away. I linked to everything below, including this site. So if you click on this link, let's say midnight into the early hours, I bet you will see Doppler radar pulsing away in more states, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Well, after I posted that video, I went back on this site and I captured at 11.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 24th. And sure enough, take a look. There we go. More states, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado. Yeah, it does seem that radar kicks off at Around 11 p.m., then you'll see more in the early hours. Pulsating, dangerous high frequencies, uh, the extremely low frequencies. Oh, we're all being uh, affected by all of this, guys. All right. So, let's see right now. This is what it looks like this is current time nanotechnology still operating in the southern states uh, extremely low frequencies from what is this uh, Alabama Houston area Southern California radar pulsing um, I want to say anomalous pulses here in Kansas. Yeah, radar sites sure do have a whole new look to them. So I will link below to everything. I just want to show you a few mainstream media articles as well as some studies and then I'm going to get into uh, studies that, uh, look, our governments, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're in the United States, if you're in Australia, Scotland, Ireland, uh, anywhere in the UK, uh, Western country, Germany, we're all being pulsed, pulsed with uh, dangerous frequencies that don't only give us physical symptoms, affect us physically, but mentally, spiritually, psychically, emotionally. I, look, it's very upsetting to know that you are being controlled. I don't like that. I really, it, it kind of pisses me off. And I am experiencing a lot of different symptoms that well, let's just say 
Put me behind the eight ball. I'm not operating the way I believe that I could be operating. And I'm just not capable of doing it. And yeah, that should really anger and upset everybody when you know that all of this is externally induced. You don't have any control over it and someone else is doing it to you. Targeting the brain with sound waves. 2009 MIT technology review. Ultrasound, you know, those extremely low frequencies, might provide a new non-invasive way to control brain activity, non-invasive way to control brain activity over the past two years. Scientists have begun experimenting with low frequency, low intensity ultrasound that can penetrate the skull and activate or silence brain cells. Just over the past two years, well, so 2007, 2008, into 2009, really? Ah. Uh, yeah, if people would just do a little bit of research, they would find that all of the articles that they read, whether it is mainstream media or coming out of colleges, they, they would be able to pick up the lies so easily. Um, but let me just read you a few little, you know, tidbits of this article. Now allowing scientists to apply ultrasound to control the brain. Transducers, which generate the acoustic waves, enable more precise focusing of ultrasound energy. Doesn't that sound like the extremely low frequencies that they are emitting in an awful lot of areas that uh, the abject craziness that we are now witnessing on a daily basis. What explains it? Now, I do want to say to those who leave comments that it's the poisons, it's the frequencies, it's the breathing in the, the toxic chemicals and heavy metals that's doing it to Americans. Americans have never been right. We are not a right people. We ain't right, as they say in South Carolina. Um, so when you are a people, the majority of whom have never really done any work on themselves to mature, to learn from their experience, to grow, to understand who they are, none of that self-reflective work, you know, reevaluating how they're living periodically and, and uh, reevaluating their beliefs, understanding where those beliefs come from, then you have a population that is filled with a whole lot of people who do not know who they are. So they are susceptible, easily, easily manipulated. They're vulnerable to being easily manipulated by these invisible weapons. So in part, it is the frequencies and the poisons, but that's not the whole answer. So ultrasound operates in the megahertz to gigahertz range, frequencies that are fine for passing through soft tissue, but would liquefy bone as bone absorbs the energy of the acoustic wave. It heats up. Ah, that's interesting, isn't it? Modulate the hormones or neurotransmitters, which may have application for psychiatric disorders, obesity, addiction, low frequency, low intensity, ultrasound can activate channels, triggering the cells to send an electrical message through the neural circuit, stimulate the motor cortex, trigger movement in live mice. That's MIT 2009. And how they present this information is it's going to be a wonderful, um, all, of, all of these new discoveries. It's, it, it's wonderful because it's going to help people with Parkinson's and uh, with their medical issues and their psychiatric disorders. But we don't see any evidence of the help, right? 
Parkinson's, dementia, psychiatric disorders continue to skyrocket. And 2015, in first, scientists used sound waves, extremely low frequencies, to control brain cells. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, do you remember this? I hope the volume's okay. No, it's not. Oh. That's Nora O'Donnell. Yeah, when you look at our mainstream media reporters, they have become obedient little children when they weren't uh, not too long ago. What has happened to them? Money changes people. The more money they get, the more success, the more notoriety, the more attention. It does change people, but yeah, on, when you know that we are being targeted with these frequencies, especially the extremely low frequencies that can mind control individuals or the, the population in a region or a country, you have to wonder. So, uh, this is our fabulous Donald Rumsfeld, Nora O'Donnell, talking about electromagnetic weapons. Technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwaves. Directed energy and high-powered microwaves. Technology. Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. it's, um, it, is, it is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in very early stages. Lie. Do you want to hear anything you add? I don't think I would add much. I, I, it's, I think they are in early stages. And, and, and Do you think, General Richard Myers, you don't even know? You don't know? You think they're in early stages of development? Research? Really? Are you that stupid? You and Donnie? Come on. They used the directed energy weapons in the Persian Gulf War, which I'll get to in a second. And probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. But they had been employed, and they have been employed in... I, I remember reading an article that, you know, with each new development of weapons, <laughs> they start wars to try the weapons out. And the Persian Gulf War, they were trying out SSSS weapons. But why don't we just listen to the next couple of seconds? In, in the normal order of things, when you we invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectations that one would use it. Uh, <laughs> God. And our mainstream media, uh, these Oh, my God. They just sit there? Really? I, this guy, Donald Rumsfeld, was known, you know, to say the most absurd things. And all of these people just get away with it. You know, they're in positions of power. They're using incredibly dangerous weapons. They start wars. And they say the most ludicrous things. You know? Oh, we have no intention of using it. What? Uh, you don't even have an intention of using what you're researching? Oh, my God. All right, look. Here. Military use of mind control weapons. This is a very good article written in 1998, before that news conference. Uh, Judy Wall. PSYOPs weaponry used in the Persian Gulf War. And this is all of the... Um, all of the sections of the article right here, but the PSYOPs in the Persian Gulf War, it was very hard to get any information 
on high-tech psychological warfare, they used these weapons in Kuwait uh, against Iraqi troops. And the reason why almost nobody was reporting on it was because it was the United States, the, the military put out a gag order, like had censored mainstream media from reporting on this, so very few had the information. So this was done in 1991, high-tech psychological warfare arrives in the Middle East, uh, that was a news brief, describes a U.S. psychological operation tactic directed against Iraqi troops in Kuwait during Operation Desert Storm. The maneuver consisted of a system in which subliminal mind-altering technology was carried on standard radio frequency broadcasts. It was, uh, here, the following dispatch was subject to U.S. military censorship. That's what um, the AP got sent to them. But here, direct psychoacoustic frequencies that engage the neural networks of the enemy's brain, causing him to think any thought and feel any emotion that the Americans chose to lay on him. It, uh, one soldier talked to like 450 enemy soldiers, talked into surrendering. The possibilities are there, as the next article documents. That is exactly what happened. Well, that's what the technology could do. Uh, induce any emotion, any thought, and talk them into surrendering, and that's exactly what happened. They did it in mass. They were surrendering in droves, almost too fast for us to keep up with. Two Iraqi majors, both uh, brig um, brigade commanders who gave up their entire units. One of them gave up a remotely piloted vehicle. Mind-altering mechanism is based on a subliminal carrier technology, the silent sound spread spectrum, sometimes called S-quad or squad, which you can read, there's a patent, and you can read all about it, and I will link to everything, but this patent, the silent sounds, now possible using supercomputers to analyze human emotional EEG patterns and replicate them, then store these emotional signature clusters onto another computer and at will silently induce and change the emotional state in a human being. They had this operating for decades. And you know, there, there's so many, there, it's really remarkable what we are living because the evidence, the evidence for all of what is in use today, uh, the evidence that electromagnetic frequencies have been weaponized and are used against us, the American people, uh, and every agenda, Agenda 2030, uh, all of the geoengineering that's taking place, everything, tremendous mountains and mountains and mountains. The evidence just continues to pile up the mountain just keeps getting higher and higher, and we still can't get through to people. In Munich, Germany in 1953, they were testing the reaction time of like 40,000 people. The reaction time when a light changed using these uh, low frequencies. The reaction time changed, it slowed, using a particular frequency, and it improved using another frequency. That was back in 1953. They've been using these frequencies forever. Uh, and the extremely low frequencies, very low frequencies, the V, the E, uh, the, 
these are particularly dangerous. Extremely low frequencies, which is what you see taking place in Southern California, Houston, Alabama, these very long defined lines. And you can see them blasting off in a whole lot of areas. And the blasting has increased exponentially since I've been watching radar. So it's not just weather that they can control with these frequencies, but individuals or uh, entire regions, uh, the populations within the regions. Extremely low frequency signals have the capacity to penetrate structures which house living organisms. Extremely low frequency wave configurations allow long distance propagational capacities without appreciable, appreciable attenuation of intensity. Most importantly, extremely low frequency signals exhibit the frequencies and waveforms of bioelectrical events that occur within the brain and the body. Thus, resonance interactions between animal and nature become attractive possibilities. Yeah, well, those possibilities uh, have already been examined, experimented, and now being applied. And of course, yes, I'm just showing you study upon study upon study, evidence that we, that we can't get through to people. Well, maybe they're just so controlled now. But extremely low frequencies affect human circadian rhythms. Our rhythm, you know, our natural rhythm. What I've said in so many videos, you know, watching the radar, what, uh, looking at all of these weather events that man has taken over the job of Mother Nature. She's now put in retirement and they have taken control over all the natural processes. Well, guess what? What uh, we as human beings, but it doesn't, it's not just limited to the two leggeds, four leggeds, uh, and all species, all life. All of the natural processes have been taken over. Our natural processes have been taken over. And if that don't piss you off, well, I don't know what to say. All right, I'm going to read some. And if it gets too long, I'm going to post another video. Bio effects of selected non-lethal weapons, laser and other light phenomena, radio frequency directed energy, and oral, uh, a, <laughs> wow, uh, bio effects, yeah. It affects your brain, these frequencies. So, this is a military document. These uh, non-lethal weapons, that's a misnomer. If they change the frequency and the power uh, levels, they become lethal. I want you to see, well, especially here, incapacitating effect of microwave heating microwave heating and you tell me any of you experience this body heating do you experience uh, these moments of like suddenly your your body temperature rises and you don't know where it's come from you were probably hit with a microwave beam um, body heating to mimic a fever is the nature of the RF incapacitation. Have you ever gotten that, what I call a non-flu flu? Suddenly you feel like you have a fever. Sudden, it, it comes on suddenly and you are incapacitated. You, you can't function, you can't, you are in bed. 
sometimes for me, my experience, it will last 24 hours or maybe 48 hours, but the suddenness of its onset is it, the offset is just as sudden. It's not uh, anything natural. It's induced. Most people under fever conditions become much less aggressive. Some people may become more irritable. The subjective sensations produced by this buildup of heat are form, far more unpleasant than those accompanying uh, fever. Microwave hyperthermia, um, even with only a one degree Celsius increase in brain temperature, may disrupt working memory, thus resulting in disorientation. Extreme heat stress, such that the body's capacity for heat loss is exceeded, causes a pathological increase in the temperature of the body. The subjective sensations produced by this buildup of heat are far more unpleasant than those accompanying the fever. Uh, microwave heating, mechanisms to produce the desired effects. This concept builds a, a, on 40 years of experience with the heating effects of microwaves. And you listen to that lying sack of shit Donald Rumsfeld who says well uh, it's just in the research stage and well when it's just in you know in R&D we don't even have you know we don't even think the use of what we're researching it's not even on our radar uh, 40 years of experience with the heating effects of microwaves numerous studies have been performed on animals to identify characteristics of importance to the understanding of energy deposition in animals. The relationship between the size of the animal and the wavelength of the radio frequency energy is most important. Size of animal, wavelength of the frequency. There are so many factors that enter in to why one person has symptoms and the other person does not. The orientation of the incident energy with respect to the orientation of the animal is also important. You could be sitting on the couch with uh, someone sitting right next to you and suddenly you get hit with this microwave beam um, or it could be that the microwave, the, the, the pulse coming from Wi-Fi, coming from uh, a smart meter. Um, it really should be affecting both of you, but due to the position of the person sitting next to you and your physical position, one gets affected, the other one doesn't. And due to the size, you know, and there's a lot of uh, factors uh, fat content and other factors, all of that. So we have such judgment from people when, you know, when really you should be getting care, compassion, you know, uh, no, you get judgment and they think that you're just making it up or you're a hypochondriac or you're hallucinating, they're fine. There's so many things that are going on. And, and people just are ignorant. And ignorance can lead to judgment. Uh, distribution of human sensitivities to desired effects. No reason has been identified to suggest that anyone, anyone would be immune to this technology. Um, individuals with compromised thermoregulatory mechanisms would be susceptible with a lower incident energy density. And yesterday in a video that I posted, I said, it also matters. If you have uh, medical issues and your health has already been compromised, um, if your brain is compromised, you know, you had a stroke or, you know, you're taking psychiatric medication or other medications, and the other person's not, has a lot to do with everything
going on in terms of what people are experiencing. People with organic damage to the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that integrates the autonomic mechanisms which control heat loss, as well as people with compromised somatic features of heat loss, they're more sensitive. I had a thalamic stroke. Um, and interesting, those with chemical sensitivity are also sensitive to the electromagnetic frequencies. And yes, I was given chemical sensitivity by, oh, those fabulous medications put on the market as safe. Um, I had the chemical sensitivity first, then voila, here I am, hypersensitive to these frequencies. Since this technology utilizes radio frequency energy, it can be defeated by the use of shielding provided by conductive barriers like metal or metal screen. Aluminum screening. Uh, yeah, okay. Incapacitating effect, microwave hearing. The sensations of buzz, and this is very upsetting because there's a lot more going on than what people refer to as tinnitus. Um, first of all, the tinnitus means something's going on with your brain. That's not right. So, uh, but there's a whole lot going on here. The sensations of buzzing, ticking, hissing, knocking sounds that originate within or immediately behind the head. There's no sound propagating through the air like normal sound. Uh, this technology in its crudest form could be used to distract individuals, communicate with hostages or hostage takers, meaning there's a possibility uh, to inject voices into one's head. That is already happening. No, I don't have voices. I'm not hearing voices, but the targeted individual who hears voices. Uh, and yeah, it is going on. So possible influence on subjects. Not only might it be disruptive to the sense of hearing, it could be psychologically devastating if one suddenly heard voices within one's head. Technological status of generator, aiming device, microwave energy can be applied at a distance, uh, remotely. Uh, and guess what? At a distance, and the appropriate technology can be adapted from existing radar units. I just had to pause if you heard the cat meowing. That's because, well, my apartment is really a cat cafe. They come to eat. Anyway, uh, aiming devices likewise are available, but for special circumstances which require extreme specificity, signals can be transmitted long distances, hundreds of meters, which means they have the capacity to be away from you while they're controlling you. Biological target, normal functions, disease state, technology makes use of a phenomenon first described in the literature over 30 years ago. Different types of sounds were heard depending on the particulars of the pulse characteristics. That's why every individual uh, you know, has their own experience of these frequencies. <laughs> Thermoelastic expansion of the brain. That's not a good thing. The pressure wave of which is received and processed by the cochlear uh, microphonic system to be the mechanism of acoustic perception of short pulses of radio frequency energy. And they know the, you know, precise, the precise uh, ingredients, you know, in, in, for getting people to feel a certain way, controlling them, and for particular um, for particular uh, responses in humans, as it says, the threshold energy of microwave auditory responses in humans, you can the pulse width, 
for 2450 megahertz radio frequency energy. It is also found that there's a particular incident energy density per pulse. And that's why you hear different... Uh, I've also said in videos that I know that they change the frequency or the power, power levels when the, the hissing that I hear becomes much louder. There's a tone difference. Then I have the, the high-pitched tones. All of that means that they're changing the pulses, the frequencies, uh, the energy, the um, energy density. Thermoelastic expansion within the brain in response to radio frequency pulses. A pressure wave is generated in most solid and liquid materials by a pulse of radio frequency energy. Duration of effect lasts only as long as the exposure. I have it 24-7 every single day. And I have had that exposure for many years. Tunability. Tunable in that the characteristic sounds and intensities of those sounds depend on the characteristics of the radio frequency energy as delivered because the frequency of the sound heard is dependent on the pulse characteristics of the radio frequency energy, it seems possible that this technology could be developed to the point where words could be transmitted to, the, to be heard, like the spoken word, except that it could only be heard within a person's head. Using speech modulated microwave energy was successfully demonstrated Additional development of this would open up a wide range of possibilities. Oh, the possibilities just are endless. As we know, distribution of human sensitivities to desired effects because humans are known to experience a wide range of hearing loss due to cochlear damage. It is possible that some people can hear RF-induced sounds, others not. They don't hear it. Possible influence on subjects could facilitate a private message transmission useful to provide a disruptive condition to a person not aware of the technology. Not only might it be disruptive to the sense of hearing, it could be psychologically devastating if one suddenly heard the voices. Technical, technological status of generator aiming device, microwave energy can be applied at a distance and appropriate technology can be adapted from existing radar units. That seems to be a repeat. So, the incapacitating effect disruption of neural control. And don't know why that opened, but let's get that off. Okay, the nature of the incapacitation is a rhythmic activity synchroniza synchronization of brain neurons that disrupts normal cortical control of the cortical spinal and cortical bulbular bulbar pathways disrupts normal functioning of the spinal motor neurons which control muscle contraction and body movements multiple sclerosis exponentially increasing parkinson's you lose voluntary control of your uh, body you can also lose sudden uh, you can also lose consciousness. You can have intense muscle spasms. Um, biological target, normal function, disease state. You can read by pausing the video. Uh, but yeah, every neuron, each single neuron provides specific processing of information it receives and forms a specific pattern of impulse firing as outgoing information. Synchronization is really important. So, if somebody wants to control you, they control that synchronization. They destroy it. And what happens? You're left with no motivation. Your attention, you can't concentrate. 
uh, loss of memory. It, it's all about how behavior is organized and suddenly you're taken over. The degree of neuronal synchronization is highly controlled depending on at which frequency the synchronization rhythm occurs and how many neurons are involved it may produce different physical effects muscle weakness involuntary muscle contractions loss of consciousness muscle spasms uh, how do they do it electromagnetic pulses sufficiently strong internal fields can be generated within the brain to trigger neurons trigger neurons or make them more susceptible to firing. Uh, electromagnetic pulse concept is one in which a very fast, high voltage electromagnetic pulse is repeated at the alpha brain wave frequency, about 15 hertz. Uh, duration of effect, well, they can also bring about seizures, um, a grand mal seizure or a petite mal in epileptics but in in people who don't have epilepsy and they can do it wow in one to two minutes for a petite mal one to five for a grand mal uh, distribution of human sensitivities to desired effects 100 percent of the population would be susceptible Possible influence on subjects. Targeted individual could be incapacitated very quickly. Uh, there's different types of technologies that could be employed to influence wide areas, meaning a region, target the population in a region, or single individuals. Technology is considered to be tunable. The influence on subjects could vary from mild disruption of concentration to muscle spasms, loss of consciousness. Um, varying degrees of voluntary control depending on the chosen degree of incapacitation yeah they sit at computers and they decide you know how incapacitated they want you to be uh the aiming device radar like ah radar high peak power pulse source or an electromagnetic pulse generator operating at 15 hertz uh, technologies exist today. Aiming devices are currently available to aim towards a, you know, a specific limited region or an individual necessary to provide bursts of these nanosecond pulses in order to stimulate the desired effect. The effective range could be hundreds of miles. Uh, shielding can be provided by conductive barriers like metal or metal screen. Uh, Anti-convulsive drugs, they didn't know at that time whether or not that would uh, prevent them from giving somebody a seizure. Acoustic energy. Well, you can have vertigo. Uh, severe pressure sensations and involuntary motion of the eyes, nausea. Mechanism to produce the desired effects, intense acoustic stimulation, extremely low frequencies. High intensity sound produces eddy currents, which are localized rotational fluid displacements. Do you ever feel like suddenly you have fluid in your ear? It has to do with the, uh, it has to do with the frequencies affecting the cilia. The straw, uh, the hair cells are being stimulated and fluid can be displaced. You can also be nauseous and vomit. Uh, range of effects, mild discomfort to severe pressure sensations, nausea, gagging, giddiness, blurred vision, or vision field distortions, possible influence on subjects. Um, all of what, what I have just said, you'll have a perception of sickness, um, which makes you more susceptible to persuasion or whatever it is that they want. Laser-induced biological effects, three basic damage mechanisms are 
uh, chemical, thermal, mechanical, or acoustical, mechanical, laser-induced chemical alterations in irradiated tissue are referred to as photochemical damage. Um, the thermal effect is a primary mechanism for laser-induced in injury. Uh, the extent of the injuries induced depends on the wavelength and energy of the incident radiation, duration of exposure, and the nature of the exposed tissue and its absorption characteristics. Pulsed exposures, everything pulsed. Uh, the mechanical or acoustical mechanical effect, radiant energy is absorbed into the tissue. A laser irradiation pulse, a pressure wave is generated that may result in explosive tissue injury. Thermal effects, um, well, it it depends on whether or not it was a pulse laser beam hitting you or a continuous wave, um, but they can burn you. Uh, the organs most susceptible, skin and eyes, not, not a real surprise. Uh, burns on the skin, you could have reddening to severe blistering or charring depending on such factors as total energy, uh, deposition skin, pigmentation, tissue's ability to dissipate he heat. Um, the eyes, you can have damage to your cornea, lens of the eye, retina, cataracts, burns, corneal lesions, retinal lesions. So. The effects of lasers on eyes, dazzling or induced glare, flash blinding or loss of night adaptation, permanent or semi-permanent blinding. All right, I'm go uh, look, there's a lot of information. There's a tremendous amount. The documents, the papers, the studies, the white papers, and you still can find a whole lot. They are using this technology against all of us. So, are you not upset? Do I have a right to be upset? Is it okay for me to be upset when I read from subscribers, they feel like they're dying, that they can't function, that, and they're so young, and then the subscribers who are older and my own self we cannot live the life that we could have it's robbed from you and a whole lot of people tell me hey calm down calm down God wrote about all of this in the Bible it was meant to be. And anyway, you're going to be going to heaven, living eternal bliss, eternal joy forever. Just hang on. Uh-uh. No. I'm about here today and what's going on. And I don't like, I don't like seeing so much life suffering. And it's not just the two-leggeds. I see it in the four-leggeds. I see it in the trees. I see it in my sky. And I am... Yeah, very upsetting, very upsetting. That's the appropriate response to what is taking place today. All links are below.